Ottinger signs the contract in Dallas, eight years at $8.25 million, identical to the Jeremy Swayman contract. You've got Linus Allmark, who signed four years at $8.25 in Ottawa. You've got Igor Shosturkin turning down an $11 million uh, annual average value on his contract extension with the Rangers. This is all telling me that NHL goalies are cashing in. The cap is going up and NHL goalies are finally saying, okay, you know what? We're not going to be the the least paid players on the team because that's ultimately what it was. Your best skater was not being paid anywhere close to what your best goalie was being paid. Your best goalie was being paid way less than your best skater was being paid. That's how it's been for years. But goalies are seemingly coming together and trying to buck this trend and um they're getting paid they're cashing in and they are getting paid so what does this mean for the canucks arm i think it means a couple things um thatcher dem goes up in two years including this season so if he's held if he returns to this popliteus injury in mid-november or november whatever and he returns and he's fully healthy for the rest of this season and all of next season there's not going to be any sort of worry about uh, being injury prone as he heads into the open market. There might be among fans and, and the Canucks might have those worries, but heading into the open market, he's going to be able to cash in. Like he's going to get, he's going to get paid in free agency if he has no other injury issues. But if he has a little thing bothering him here and there over the, these final two seasons, including this one, um, it, it sets the Canucks up to be in a position where Teams might get scared off from free agency and the Canucks might be able to get some sort of damaged goods discount is how I described it uh, in the article I wrote over at CanucksArmy.com. They might be able to get some sort of damaged goods discount on Demco where you're looking at um, potentially elite goaltending and surplus value because of what you were able to sign him for. At the end of the day, Harm, I know people are the simple answer is, well, don't pay him if he gets injured. You, you don't want to keep Demko around if he got in if he gets injured again. If it's something minor, right? And it still is enough to make teams say, okay, you know what? We're not gonna dish out big money to this player. At the end of the day, Harm, there's only like five to ten goalies in the league who are as elite as Thatcher Demko, right? And that's going to be tough for the Canucks to just go out and get and go out and replace. And right now, again, things can change in two years. I wrote about that as well. Um Right now, like when when Markstrom left, they had Demko waiting in the wings, and they were pretty confident. Okay, this is going to be an elite goalie. Right now, you don't have that. Like you don't have that in Archer Shilovs, where you you think Archer Shilovs can be good and he could be a solid goaltender, but you can't possibly think that Archer Shilovs is going to be an elite goaltender at this juncture. Like there's a chance, but you can't confidently go into a business decision with Demko and say no we're not going to sign Demko in free agency because we know she loves is going to be elite goaltender they knew Demko was going to be an elite goaltender when they let Jacob Markstrom walk right they don't know that with Archer she loves and to me that's the big difference is you just don't know that just yet again you've got two years to figure out if it's going to be him it could be Nikita Tolopilo I'm not going to start going down the depth chart, but they do have some goaltending prospects as well. So it's a very fluid situation, basically, when it comes to Demko and the Canucks. But that's the thing I wondered is, um, okay, if he doesn't get injured, he's going to be in line for a big ticket. I'm not saying the Canucks don't want to go sign that, but he's going to be 30 uh, heading into his his first season on his next deal. He's going to be 31 in December. So technically, that's his age 31 season. Uh, You're not looking at seven or eight years. You're probably looking at more in that four to five range that we saw all mark signed in uh but the price is going to be a hefty one for demko on his next deal it looks like yeah i don't even want to, want to try and predict what his uh, yeah, next exactly. contract could look like uh i the also the if he stays healthy is such a huge if such a massive if uh, it also isn't just a if he stays healthy it's a what does he look like when he's back and can he immediately re- rebound to his uh elite level and sort of sustain that but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how many of these massive goalie contracts end up becoming future albatrosses. I'll also say this. How good does Nashville feel about getting that Soros extension done yeah. early in the offseason? To have Soros locked up at $7.74 million is his AAV. It seems like such a steal looking at these contracts that Allmark and Swayman and Ottinger have gotten because Saros is a better goaltender than all of them. Yep. That's what it comes down to. He's a better goaltender than all of them. And right now, the Canucks have one of the best goaltending contracts in the league. And Demko's hurt right now, but that deal for the next two seasons is a steal. So, of course, Demko's going to be looking at cashing in. But again, we've got two years to figure out exactly how this is going to map out. But it was something interesting that I wanted to bring up.